Hey, what's up, YouTube? It's me, Andrew, here. Today, I'm doing my full review on the all-new HP Pavilion Beats Special Edition. All right, let's get started. The HP Pavilion Beats is a special edition laptop that features Beats audio speakers, obviously, a unique two-tone black and red finish, a red backlit keyboard, kind of like the ones you find on gaming laptops. You also get a big Beats logo on your trackpad, which I'm not really a fan of. With an AMD A8 processor and an AMD Radeon 8210G, HP is aiming this laptop towards the casual user that wants to run basic productivity apps like Word, Netflix, to even playing light duty games. Now for the operating system, you have the standard Microsoft Windows 8.1, and the retail price usually starts at $599 US, however if you shop around, you can find this laptop at Walmart for around $569 US. The design and build quality of the HP P030NR is pretty good. You get a black and red plastic finish that looks very similar to a pair of red Beats Solo HD. The weight comes in at 6 pounds, and its thickest point is 1 inch. On the interior, you got a standard keyboard with a 10Q numeric keypad, as well as a trackpad with a big Beats logo on it. Now we got our keyboard flex test. I'm going to press down very firmly. As you can see here, the keyboard flex is not too bad on this laptop. Only con on the design and build quality is that it is difficult to open sometimes with one hand. Take a look here. Sometimes it takes me 2-3 to three tries to get it open. I just wish HP would have put a little gap to make it easier to open. Next up we're going to test out the viewing angles on this 15.6 inch TN panel. I would have to admit the overall viewing angle performance on this laptop were poor. Let's go and test out the viewing angle by tilting the display all the way back now. And that's at 100% right there. Another knock on this panel was it is extremely reflective. Take a look at all those reflections on the panel. This laptop's rocking a 15.6 inch display with a resolution of 1366 by 768. Colors and contrast ratios were about average for this panel. You can also custom configure this laptop with a 1080p panel from HP.com. Let's go and take a look at the Spider 4 Pro colorimeter results. For the Adobe sRGB, I got a score of 66%, and for the Adobe RGB, I got a score of 50%. Moving along to ports now. On the left side, you got your AC charging port, gigabit ethernet port, exhaust port for your fans, full-size HDMI port, two USB 3.0 ports, and an SD card reader. Let's take a look at the other side now. Here goes your Kensington security slot. DVD drive, USB 2.0 port, headset microphone jack combo, hard disk indicator, and power status LED indicator. The performance from the quad-core AMD A855M has been great. You get a base clock speed of 1.7 GHz, but it can turbo boost up to 2.7 GHz. Whether you're using basic productivity apps or programming code, this CPU has been quick and responsive. My only knock on the CPU is that it is not that power efficient compared to the Intel chipsets. For the Geekbench 364-bit version, the AMD AA generated a single-core performance score of 1,532, and for the multi-core performance, it came in at 3,818. And for your RAM, you have 8GB of PC3-12800 RAM that is non-expandable. Next up is touchscreen performance and trackpad performance. This laptop features a 15.6-inch 10-point multi-touch display that has been very smooth and responsive. The buttonless trackpad was pretty smooth, with the exception of two-finger scrolling. Let me give you a demo right here. As you can see here, sometimes it occasionally lags. It doesn't keep up with my two fingers. The graphics card powering this laptop is the AMD Radeon 8510G, which is a fairly capable graphics card. And to test it out, let's go and test out some benchmarks here. For the 3D Mark Advanced Edition Firestar, I got a score of 436. For Skydiver, I got a score of 1,515. For Cloudgate, I got a score of 1,576. And for Ice Storm Extreme, I got a score of 15,637. With the AMD Radeon 8510G, you can expect to play many of the older light duty games like Dota 2, Call of Duty Modern Warfare, Skyrim, but don't expect to play a game like Battlefield 4 as I tested it and it is terrible. Let's get into some real world testing with Skyrim in action. Here are the graphic settings I used. Get off me you big bear. Well you don't want none of this, come here. Yeah you better run. Well you want some? Come on get down. Woo! So far, the game is running pretty smooth. We're averaging around 29 to 31 frames per second. All right, let me go and finish this bear off. Woo! Get off me. And yes, I will test out Minecraft for you guys that always ask, will this laptop be able to play Minecraft? So here you go, guys. So right now, I'm averaging around 45 to 55 frames per second with Optifine installed. This game is running pretty smooth so far without any hiccups. All right, let's take a quick walk over here and see how the frames generate. So far, very smooth and responsive. Overall, the AMD Radeon 8510G is a very good graphics card for Minecraft. Earlier, I mentioned about the AMD chips not being efficient, and this is why. On average, the GPU temperature was around 85 degrees Celsius with regular usage. However, once you fired up a game, the GPU temperature rose to around 105 to 110 degrees Celsius. 
Speaking of temperature control, once you fired up a game for around 30 minutes, this area got very warm. Just be sure to keep this area well ventilated. The fan noise levels during normal usage were good. The only time I was here the fan running was when I was firing up a game. So rest assured, this laptop does not have a loud buzzing fan. For those of you that have a lot of media, you'll definitely appreciate the 1TB hard drive on this laptop. The only downside is it is running at 5400 RPM. Key travel performance is adequate, and the tactile feedback from the keys were actually better than the previous HP Pavilion I reviewed. Only knock here is there is not a number lock key LED. Overall, I would rank this keyboard as good. With this being a Beat Special Edition laptop, you also get a backlit keyboard in red. You also only get one option, either on or off. Now let's dive into the speaker performance. This laptop features two Beats audio speakers on top, and you get a subwoofer on the bottom. The sound quality from these Beats audio speakers were about average. In fact, they sound very similar to the previous HP Pavilion I reviewed. Okay, maybe these have a little more kick to them, but I couldn't hear a big difference. And for those of you that like to use an SD card, let's see if it's flush mount with the laptop. And it just barely sticks out. Battery performance was okay. On average, I was able to get around 4 to 5 hours out of a full charge with screen brightness at around 70%. One of the biggest cons to this laptop is the bloatware. Why HP? Why did you put so much bloatware on here? The good news here is you can use a program like CCleaner to remove all of it. If you're looking for a laptop for basic productivity and casual gaming, then the HP Pavilion Beats Edition is worth a look. You get a quad-core AMD A8 processor, an AMD Radeon 8610G that can handle many of today's light-duty games, and a solid touchscreen panel. My cons on this laptop were the excessive amount of bloatware, low resolution panel, and not having an easy way to remove the cover to upgrade the RAM and hard drive. Alright, this completes my full review on the all new HP Pavilion P030NR Beats Edition. If you enjoyed this review, please be sure to hit that like button, and don't forget to subscribe to be notified of the latest videos just like this one. Alright, thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.